Once you successfully set up the Telvin CSS with Next.js project, let me show you how you can create the navigation menu. To create a navigation menu, you have to open your Explorer tab and inside your project, right inside this block, you have to create a new folder, component and create a new file inside it. If you create your navigation menu inside these pages, then the end user can easily access your individual component using navbar out. So instead of creating all the components of this project inside this pages folder, we create a new folder inside this block and we name that folder components. And inside these components, we create all the components of this project. So let me first create a new file here and I'm going to name this file header.js. Inside this file, I'm going to add the navigation menu of this project. So let me first add this header inside my index.js. Now because inside this, I have a default hello world text, I'm going to just get it off this h1. And here I'm going to add a division tag like this and I'm going to import my component header file here. Import header from then I'm going to specify the path of this header file. So I'm going to say here double dot forward slash components and inside that we have header. And then I'm going to print this header over here. Save these changes. You're going to get an error message because inside this file I don't have any element. So let me just create a react functional component like this and here I'm going to get rid of this import statement because in Next.js you don't have to import react manually and then I'm going to save this file. Now you can see we have this header here. Let me just create the finish website header. So here I'm going to say header and to this header we specify some Tailwind classes. So I'm going to specify here class name and then specify here bg gray 50. This class is going to specify gray 50 background color to this header. If I hover over this class, you can see I'm just going to specify the background color with the RGB value. Just out of that, I'm going to say div and to this div, I'm going to specify some class names. So I'm going to specify some Tailwind class names here. So I'm going to say Excel container. Then I'm going to specify Excel MX Auto. Now you can notice I am using here Excel breakpoint. I only want to apply these classes when the viewport is greater than Excel breakpoint. You can notice. When I hover over it, you can see when the viewport is greater than 1280 pixel, I wanted to apply this container. The same goes for this MX Auto as well. I wanted to apply this MX Auto, margin left auto and margin right auto when the viewport is greater than 1280 pixel. Just out of that, right inside it, I'm going to add three different elements. So I'm going to first add here a div again and then add the first element, which is the input text box. Then I'm going to add again a new div and then I'm going to add my title. So I'm going to add here an anchor tag, something like this. I'm not using href because I'm using link component instead of anchor tag. And then to this anchor tag, I'm going to specify design. Just out of that, just, just out of this div right down here, I'm going to add another div. And then inside this, I'm just going to add a flex box, something like this and add different social media icons. As you know, I don't have any social media icons imported in this project. I'm going to do that later, just for now. Here, I'm going to specify anchor tag and specify here Facebook, duplicate this and specify here Twitter and YouTube. Later, we'll add icons instead of this text. I'm going to have the result something like this. Now, just for that, here to this text box, we specify placeholder, which is search, save this. And now you can see you have your text box here. Just out of that, I wanted to align all these three items one by one. So to this container right here, I'm going to specify flex. You can see all these items is now aligned one by one. And then I want to center this. So I'm just going to specify here flex call items center SM flex row and SM justify between and then I'm going to center all the text using text center class and padding Y is going to be three. So let me explain these classes. Now when the viewport is smaller than SM breakpoint, it means when the viewport is less than 640 pixel, I want to apply these classes, this one. And if the viewport is greater than that, I want to apply this flex row, justify between and all these classes. Now whenever I use this breakpoint, keep in mind I'm applying these classes only for the certain breakpoints. 
if you have the basic understanding of Delvin, that might help you to understand how I use these classes. Now, let me save these changes first. And I save this, you can see, I have some space between all these items. Because you can notice we have here, justify between. Just out of that, to this div, I'm going to specify some class name. So I'm just going to first specify MD flex none. This class is only going to apply after the medium breakpoint. Means when the viewport is greater than 768 pixel. Then I'm going to say W96. So width is going to be 96. 96 means 24M or you can say 384 pixel. Then I'm also going to specify order. So I'm going to say here order 2 SM order 1. So for the smaller breakpoint, I want this as a first item. Just out of that, I'm going to specify flex justify center padding y4 it means i want to specify top and bottom padding then i'm going to specify sm padding y zero i only want to apply this padding when the viewport is less than this smaller breakpoint otherwise i'm going to remove this padding from this div you can see we have this text box right here now when i specify order to both these division tags the text box will automatically move to its first position now, just out of that, let me just style this design section. So, to this div, we specify class name, which is going to be shrink w80. It means I want to specify 20 rem, or you can say 320 pixel width to this division tag. Then I'm going to specify sm order. So, this will specify the second order to this design. Just out of that, to this div, right here, we specify class w96. So this is actually going to specify 24 RAM width to this division tag, or you can say 384 pixel to this div. Then we specify here order three. Then I'm going to specify flex, justify center to center everything. Let me save this. And now you can see we have the actual order. Now just for that, let me add some space between these icons. So here I'm going to specify some gap. So gap is going to be six. Save this. Here, I'm going to have some gap between these items. Now, just for that, let me just style this input text box. Here, I'm going to specify class name and specify some Delvin classes to this input text box so we can easily style it. Margin top one, that will add a top margin. Then specify block. W means width is going to be 60. Then I'm going to add padding X3. This is going to specify left and right padding to this input text box. Then specify padding Y2 to specify top and bottom padding. And then specify BG white. This is going to specify background white color to this input text box. Just out of that, I'm going to specify border. Border slate is going to be 300. I'm going to specify color to the border using this border slate class. And just out of that, I'm going to enter here. And then I'm going to specify a few other classes as well. So I'm going to specify here rounded, full. This will specify border radius to this input text box. You can see, just for that, we specify text SM, shadow is going to be SM. And then specify here placeholder slate 500. So this class is actually going to specify color to the placeholder. Now when I save the changes, you can see. I'm going to have my input text box. Now what I want, instead of adding all these classes over here, let me use the CSS. So let me just back to the styles and right down here we have these globals. Let me open this and here I can specify CSS styling to this input text box. Now because I'm using only one input text box in this block, I'm adding all the styling inside this global.css file. If you have individual input text boxes in your website, you can create a new style file in the Next.js so you can specify individual styling to your component. So here I'm going to say input text and then I'm going to specify all the classes which we have specified to this input text box. So let me cut this right from here and specify that right inside this input text. So here I'm going to first call the Telvin apply utility class like this. And then I'm going to specify all these classes. Now what I want to apply these classes, I need to just call this input text. Let me copy this and then I'm going to specify that here. 
input text. Now when I save the changes, you can see I'm going to have the same styling. Let me just back to the global CSS and right down here, I'm just going to apply more classes here. So I'm going to say here apply and add a few more classes here. So I'm going to say focus outline none. Then we specify focus. Oops. Focus is going to be border sky 500. I'm just going to remove the outline from this input text box. As you know, whenever you click on the input text box, you will get some weird border. So I'm just going to remove that using these classes. I'm going to specify focus for the ring. So I'm going to specify ring one and focus is going to be ring sky 500 like this. That's it. Now, if you want, you can put all these classes in the single line as well. Now, because of the smaller display, I want to show all the classes. So I'm trying to put all the apply statement on the different lines. So let me just save the changes. You're not going to see anything, but when you click on this search, you can see you have this border to this input text box. Now, just for that, let me just back to the header. And once I style this input text box, let me just style this second section. Let me just style this design and this Facebook icons. So let's add the icons inside this project. And also we are going to add the font families so we can specify font family to all the text of the website. 